Mr. President, I rise tonight to uh, talk about the, the matter that's before us, which is the National Defense Authorization Act. And um, I don't think uh, we have to make a, uh, a fulsome argument tonight that it's very important we pass this Authorization Act for the, the fundamental purpose being that um, we have to make sure that uh, we can, at a minimum, complete action in the very near future on authorizing a whole range of programs that keep our people safe and ensure our national security. So I'm confident we'll do that, but that's vitally important. And I, I rise tonight to talk about uh, one aspect of that, of that challenge, which is, um, and again, it's just one part of our, our national security interests, uh, but it relates specifically to what's been happening in Afghanistan over the last decade, in particular uh, to uh, women and girls in Afghanistan. The amendment that I've uh, introduced and will be speaking on behalf of tonight is amendment number 2172, which regards the security of Afghan women and girls. For the past 12 years, United States service members uh, have been deployed uh, in Afghanistan fighting the insurgency there. Their sacrifices, the sacrifices of our own people, have created the space for Afghan democracy to take root and civil society to develop. It's imperative that we draw down, that as we draw down uh, U.S. combat troops in Afghanistan, that we remain focused on the United States' long-term strategic interests in the region. It's in the United States' national security interest for Afghanistan to remain stable, secure, and democratic. We've seen what life, uh, we've seen it from a distance, but we've, we've been able to observe what life under the Taliban uh, looks like in Afghanistan. Uh, today and over, or I should say, when, when, when the Taliban were, were in charge. Uh, we also can see with, with the uh, perspective of recent history what it's looked like uh, since the Taliban were uh, removed. A return to their rule, however, will not only set back the progress that's been made, but also will allow the forces of intolerance and extremism to triumph. 2014 marks a significant transition in Afghanistan. U.S. and coalition forces will draw down, while voters will go to the polls to choose their second democratically elected president. We're considering this year's National Defense Authorization Act with just six weeks uh, remaining before the beginning of 2014. Our military families are welcoming back soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who have seen more than a decade of conflict in Afghanistan. Mr. President, when I meet, as I know the presiding officer and other members of the, the Senate do, when we meet with service members who served in Afghanistan, I must never forget, as none of us must never forget, their sacrifice, their determination, and their valor. Since October of 2001, Americans have fought for a stable, prosperous and democratic Afghanistan. On my trips to Afghanistan, which I guess now numbers three, three trips there, I've come to understand that women and girls often display remarkable, remarkable courage, uh, but are often the most vulnerable targets. Great progress has been made, uh, and I'll just mention a couple of examples. Uh, about a decade ago, almost no girls were in school in Afghanistan very close to, if not at zero. The number of Afghan girls in school now is 2.4 million girls in school. Women represent more than 27% of Afghans serving in parliament. A small but brave corps of women uh, has, has joined the Afghan National Security Forces in service uh, to their country. None of this would have been possible just, uh, just a little more than a decade ago, 12 years ago. Whenever I meet with them, Afghan women emphasize that they are not willing, nor should they be, willing to give up 
uh, on the gains that they have achieved. They've achieved uh, with help from uh, the American people. Just yesterday, I met with uh, Nilo Far Saki, who is working to promote women in the workforce. And hearing her commitment to advancing the role of women firsthand, as I did yesterday, uh, further motivated me to introduce and advance uh, this amendment. During my last trip to Afghanistan, I met, I met uh, with Fauzia Kufi, who is an inspiring lawmaker and women's rights uh, advocate. As a mother of two young daughters, she has worked to instill the importance of education and to make sure that her daughters understand that. She now serves in a leadership role in the Afghan parliament. And I would also mention uh, when we were meeting with her, she talked about how both her father and her husband had been killed uh, because they were politically active. But even in the face of that, she has put herself forward to serve in public, uh, in pub public office in Afghanistan. A third example, another brave woman um, showing um, the people of the world what it means to, to serve and to act even in the face of danger, uh, Soraya Paksad, uh, who lives in Herat, recently traveled to the United States and visited not just uh, my home state of Pennsylvania, but literally the, the county that I live in, and impressed people there as she always does. Soraya is a true entrepreneur and philanthropist. With U.S. government support, she's opened up a women's shelter uh, in, in uh, Baghdad's province. And that's just the beginning of what we could say about her service. We don't have enough time tonight to give even more examples, but Soraya has been a great a great example to me and so many others. So these inspiring stories, just these three that I talked about, are just a few of the many. But I am deeply concerned, I know a lot of people are, that we've already begun to see the progress on Af uh, Afghan women's rights and security uh, be rolled back. Mr. President, in an effort to honor the sacrifice the American people have made to help women and girls in Afghanistan, uh, I, along with Senator Ayat, have introduced an amendment to this Authorization Act uh, to m ensure that those gains are not uh, degraded. Uh, again, the amendment is number 2172, and I'm grateful uh, to uh, Senator Ayat uh, for her work uh, on this issue and for her leadership uh, on this issue, because we know, and I think the evidence is, is as clear as could be, that the security of Afghan women and girls is not simply about their own security and the value and the importance of that. It's critically important to the long-term future of the country. We know that if more, uh, more women and girls are not just uh, allowed to, to be uh, educated, to go to school and to, to learn and to grow and to achieve, uh, that in and of itself has an economic impact, a positive impact on that uh, on a woman and her family, but also on the economy of Afghanistan. It's also, though, a question of uh, the steps we're going to take to ensure not just their own security, but the security of the country. If they advance, if women and girls in Afghanistan advance, Afghanistan will be a safer place, literally have uh, less of a terrorism threat because of the direct involvement of women in the economy and in the life uh, of the people of Afghanistan. So let me just quickly summarize what the amendment does. First, it focuses on political transition. Afghanistan will hold, as I mentioned before, historic elections in April. As the country votes for, the, for president, uh, a president that will help uh, Afghanistan transition from conflict, it's critical that women not be disenfranchised. Therefore, this amendment seeks to ensure the adequate staffing of polling stations by female uh, officers. Second, the other part of the transition, of course, is uh, the security transition. This bill would also improve awareness and responsiveness among Afghan National Security Forces uh, personnel regarding the unique challenges that women confront. It will also focus on the recruitment and retention of women in the Afghan National Security Forces. It would be, to use just one word, unconscionable to abandon the women and girls of Afghanistan 
who have made great progress, uh, but if we take steps that uh, lead to the abandonment of, of women and girls in Afghanistan during this transition, this drawdown, uh, we would be making a terrible mistake. Uh, we would not honor the sacrifice of our own uh, servicemen and women, and we would also be, um, be harming the important transition that's taking place in Afghanistan. So this legislation would demonstrate not just our commitment and dedication to this important goal, but it would also ensure a much brighter future, not just for uh, that young girl or a woman in Afghanistan and his or her, uh, her family, but will ensure literally a safer uh, and more secure and, uh, and a much less uh, extreme uh, situation in Afghanistan when we consider all of the threats uh, that are present there on a daily basis. So I urge my colleagues to support in this uh, authorization process Amendment Number 2172. And I again want to commend and salute the, the work of Senator Ayotte on this very important uh, priority for the United States. Mr. President, I would yield the floor.